you're saying that God wants to be involved. He wants to be involved, yeah. But I want you to give an example yeah. of something that surprised you mm-hmm. it did surprise that, God, that God got involved in. Yeah. And so there's a chapter in this book called How Should We Ask? Mm-hmm. And some people think, and I was one of these people, yeah. that asking God, going to God and asking for something isn't very holy. Right. Selfish. Right? Greedy. But greedy. But the truth is, Carnal. as we look at, even at the Lord's Prayer, mm-hmm. we're told to ask for something as simple as bread, mm-hmm. which is like the most basic thing that we Mm -hmm. could ask for, most basic sustenance. Because God cares about our asking through prayer, because that's where the the miraculous, it's an invitation of involvement becomes material, yeah, becomes real in our lives. Okay. It, It takes on flesh. And mom, you know this. You and dad have served in a lot of different church camps. Yes. Right. You all you all have been welcomed into Churches Everything from, from Methodist, Baptist across to some of the very, wild, wild, Pentecostal, wild Pentecostal cares about. I mean, yes, y'all have been, through, holiness. been to all of yeah. it. And yeah. so I grew up seeing a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that turned me off to prayer mm-hmm. was I would see at times, I would see people pray for things. Yeah. And then their relationship with God and like how they gave glory to God was all about the thing and not so much about God. Yeah. Does, that, does that make like it's I just felt like, like the emphasis it's kind was of on like the, the thing. emphasis is on the promise instead of the promise. Yeah, like yeah. they're chasing the yeah. promise and not yeah. so much the promiser. Whereas you see Moses say, "I don't want the promise land without the yeah. promiser." Absolutely. And so what I did is I swung the pendulum, and 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 you know this running. Oh, no, your dad and I did the same thing. I totally get it. Yes, I, I'm like yeah. I'm gonna run in the opposite direction. But here's the yeah. thing: I think it's good for us to remember this running in the opposite direction of the lie doesn't necessarily deliver you to your father's house of truth. That's it, so good. Do, it doesn't necessarily, yeah. but, yeah. but it does move your feet. Yeah. And God does something God work with, moving. with people who move their feet. So move your feet, just don't stand still. Okay, yeah. so I, I ran from that and I noticed, mom, I noticed that my prayers started to shrink up. Mm. Like my prayer life started to shrink up. Mm-hmm. Um, I was praying these vague prayers yeah. and I would really only pray if I was praying for another person or if I was praying for something like world peace or you know something yeah. like that. Yeah. So it removed God and how God interacts with me through prayer really from my everyday life. Okay. So around this time, Julie and I were, we were buying our first home and we had a little patch of grass, like literally it would take three minutes to mow. And we were house poor, right? We had invested everything that we had to get into this home. We didn't have window treatments. We didn't have a sofa to sit on. Uh, we had a mattress that was on the floor. I mean, like that, yeah. that was the state of our house. But I really wanted a lawnmower. I really, I just did. So I went to Lowe's and I just walked around because, you know, that's what you do. A lot when of men you don't do that. have yeah. money, but, you know, you want to get something, you just walk around. So I walk around, I'm looking at the lawnmowers and they're like showing off, right? They're all on display. I think it's like March, beginning of April. So it's around that time when people are starting to think about mowing their their yards again. And I finally found one that I like really liked. And I think it was $200, which for us at the time, it was a lot. And I'm like, I'm going to get it. You know, I'll work it out relationally with Julie. We'll figure this out. It might be a few hours of tense interactions, but we'll get through it. And I was about ready, like pull the trigger and the spirit of God made it so clear to me. And I knew, I knew I wasn't making this up because I don't think like this, like ask me for a lawnmower. I was wow. like, I was like, wait, what? He's like, ask me for a lawnmower. I was like, okay, this is weird. And all I said, mom, all I said was, God, would be amazing if you gave me a lawnmower. Mm-hmm. And I just walked out of the store mm-hmm. two or three days later. And so I'm not talking like weeks, months, years. It was either two or three days later, I get a call from a friend who I hadn't spoken to in over a year. And he called me and said, and I don't normally answer phone calls. You know this about me. I'm I do really know that. bad. Even about, when I have your children. Like, like I'm really bad about yes. answering phone calls. But I answered this one. I just felt like yeah. I was supposed to answer it. I answer it. And he says, hey, you know, a little small talk, weather kind of thing. And then he said, hey, really, the reason why I called you is I, I, moving. And I wanted to see, I can't move. I just got this on more. I want to see if you wanted it. I was like, wait, like, so you want me to buy it from you or what? He's like, no, no, no. I, I was about to sell it on Craigslist. And I just felt in my spirit that I was supposed to call you specifically wow. and offer you this lawnmower. Yeah. Do you want it? And mom, in that, in that moment, like God did something in me mm-hmm. that could never be undone. Mm-hmm. I saw 
the interconnectedness, I saw that the Father, at, he encourages us to ask. Actually, I would say he requires us, not encourages, requires us to ask so that we could become aware. Yeah. Because the people who do not ask do not connect the dots. They are unaware of how they are living in an answered prayer. They pray these vague prayers, mm -hmm. and vague prayers are okay, but they really don't do anything for you because you don't connect the dots. Right. You don't see how God is moving in your life. And then you get into the question, though. People are like, well, I asked God for this, or I asked God for that, and I was specific, and God didn't show up. Well, I've wrestled with God about this. And, uh, and you have people who are like, well, I just pray God's will. Like, everything is just, God, your will be done today. God, your will be done today. And then you have the other group that's like, everything, I'll be very specific and tell God exactly what I want him to do. And you can actually find a precedent for both yeah. to a degree in Scripture. So I was taken to... Jesus' moment of pain in the garden. And God showed me something so clearly. There's three dimensions to healthy prayer. Number one, Jesus was, he was specific. He said, Father, if there's any way, any way, let this cup pass. Let me not drink this cup. Any way. He was very specific. Number two, he was steadfast. He prayed it again and again, like he went after it yeah. again and again to the point where he was he was sweating blood. Yeah. It was so He wasn't double-minded. He wasn't double-minded. He didn't say, but then again, but then again if, if, you know, maybe this, no, you know. It yeah, was, he, just, he was yeah. specific, mm -hmm. he was steadfast, mm -hmm. but then he was also surrendered. Mm -hmm. He said, not my will, mm -hmm. but yours be done. Mm -hmm. Healthy prayer when it comes to entreating God, and I, I wrote a whole chapter on this, when it comes to entreating God, when it comes to going to God with our request, mm -hmm. it requires us to be specific, because it's actually in the journey of us being able to articulate the prayer, like it prepares us to receive what we're asking.